One of the key questions that a lot of newcomers to this sport have is quite simply, how much does this all cost? Now, the annoying answer to that question is it depends. It depends on your weight class. It depends on what kind of things you're building. But in this video, I'm hoping to give just a rough idea of cost using some real life existing builds as examples. I'm not going to be talking about BattleBots level things here. That is not something that is particularly newcomer accessible. I'm going to be talking purely insect weights. In this case, a couple of UK ant weights and a UK beetle. I'm going to be approaching this purely by talking through what these robots cost us. Things will vary, especially if you're in the US with completely different parts available. It's going to vary a lot just based on what you do, but this is going to be a rough baseline of where we are on cost. The key thing I'm going to be doing in this whole video is assuming that you're starting with nothing. I'm going to be accounting for the cost of every single tool that you would buy. I'm even going to be accounting for the cost of where something comes in a five pack and you only need two. So in some senses, I'm going to be giving a worst case scenario. And this is a sport where once you've invested, things do become a little cheaper. But if you think of getting into this, you're not sure if it's for you. That long term investment isn't necessarily going to be what you're interested in. So let's start off by looking at some basic things that you are going to need for essentially every robot build. So to start ourselves off thinking about equipment, here is what really is the very, very bare minimum you will need to run any robot. First things first, transmitter and receiver. This does the talking, this does the listening, and altogether it is what gives you control. Lots of people come into this thinking, oh, I can modify a toy car. And yeah, you absolutely can if you know what you're doing. I sure don't know what I'm doing with that. So I think for 99.9% .9 of people, this is going to be the starting place. This particular transmitter is a fairly budget option. There are cheaper, but if you decide this isn't for you, this thing will hold its value for you to resell pretty well. This, along with the receiver, usually on eBay about £40. When we talk through individual robots, I'll include the receiver separately and then add the transmitter to that at 30 because the receiver is usually about 10. That's absolute must have number one. Number two is about your batteries. So first of all, a charger for the type of batteries you're using. In insect weights, we tend to be using 2 and 3S, so I have a very cheap 2 and 3S LiPo charger. And then the other thing, it's a small cost, but absolutely vital. I tried to get away without this and it was just a bad rookie thing to do is a lipo bag for charging and storing batteries in these batteries if things go wrong are very fiery this is going to keep things safe it won't prevent a fire in terms of a battery it'll prevent it spreading the other thing that you're really not going to get many builds done without maybe there are ways but you're going to find yourself doing it at some point is soldering so here is a soldering set this is about £15. It has served me well so far. It's one of the things I'm looking to upgrade, but it is absolutely fine. So the soldering set is about 15 Transmitter and char sorry, transmitter and receiver running about 40 combined. And then all of the charging stuff together, so the charger and your LiPo bag, I think ran around 20 So these are your very, very basic startup costs before you even get into building a robot. In terms of other tools, you can do without a lot of things if you want to, but I would be very surprised if you could get anything built without things like a drill, a saw of some kind, screwdrivers, the real basics like that. We'll cover the cost of those as we go through individual robots based on what was used to build them. So to start off with, let's take a look at what is basically a deconstructed ant weight. And this is pretty much the simplest and cheapest competitive setup you would probably find yourself using. Really simple. Battery, probably about £3.50, quite hard to find, but that would be my rough sort of price estimate. Battery connector and switch, you're probably looking at another pound. Wheels and motor mounts, about £4 combined. The material used, I haven't got a full sheet of it because I've used all of it, but this is 1.5mm polycarbonate. An A5 sheet of that will cost £2, £2.50, and that will last for more than a whole outweight build. We've then got a receiver be around £10. This is the speed controller that converts the signal from the receiver into motion in the motors. That is 11. And finally, the two motors together are eight. In the description to this video, I've got a big spreadsheet 
which not only breaks down these costs in a slightly more digestible format, we'll also have links to most of these things. Pretty much everything you see here is from the Bristol Bot Builders website. Amazing resource for parts and guides. Also a fantastic shop that supports people within the community. Cannot recommend it highly enough. So all told, the cost of what you see on the table is about £40. That's the sort of amount of value you will put into the arena. Bristol Bot Builders, by the way, do do a sort of kit version of this, slightly different parts, pretty much the same price. Where things start getting a bit more expensive is the tools you're going to use. So for this, I've needed a small hacksaw, which was sort of a pound shop job, about five pounds. A glue gun or super glue, probably around five. The big expense out of tools is a drill. So use these motor mounts, for example, you do need to drill holes. Maybe you could get away without it and you could glue things down, but it's not something I recommend. So a good drill, well, a cheap drill, is going to be at least 30. Screwdrivers, pound shop if you want. The soldering set we looked at earlier, 15. Some form of clamps and work holding for cutting is a very good idea. A couple of pounds for that. Some files of some kind, very useful to have. That's probably another fiver. An assortment of nuts and bolts to actually put this all together, probably about five pounds. And then more of the stuff we looked at earlier, the transmitter and the sort of charging equipment is going to be another 30 combined. All told, my cost of tools and equipment on this was around £114, which means the whole build, again, if you're starting from nothing, probably looking at about 150 to get a simple outweight like this running. Let's move on to a robot that's got quite a bit more going on and therefore sees quite a significant increase in price. This, rather than being two-wheel drive, is four-wheel drive and it also has an active weapon. What I've laid out here is everything that this robot needed in addition to what we saw in the one before. So we've got two extra drive motors. We've got two extra motor mounts, two extra wheels purely for the drive. We then have another motor mount and motor for the weapon itself. This motor, crucially, is different to these. These are the correct speed for drive. This is a much lower speed with more torque so the robot could flip itself back over. It was a lot more expensive. I kind of rushed it as well. I could have got it cheaper. Where these were about £4 each, this was more like 7 We've also got a servo, which I tore apart to get the little speed controller that's inside to run the weapon. That's another sort of two or three. Where things really pick up in cost, if anything, is on materials. So this robot, because of the, just because of bad design choices, really, it uses three different materials. It uses the polycarbonate we looked at before, and it uses two different thicknesses of HDPE. We've got some three millimeter and some one millimeter. Buying both of those cost quite a lot. I think the overall material cost on this, if I just check my spreadsheet, these materials alone cost another £8.50. I didn't use most of them, but again, if we're talking about the cost to go from nothing to this robot, that has to be included. The other big jump up was actually a labour cost. Now, I like to make everything in-house, but because this was a recreation of another robot, it was really important to me that the shape of the hammer was right. And that meant outsourcing to get that cut by someone else. This was laser cut from 3mm nylon, I got two of them made, but that was still £7. I've only used one, but it was two. The cost is still the cost to go from scratch. So all of these things have quite subtly increased the overall cost of this robot. In terms of the amount that would go into the arena, we're looking at just over £80. And then the tool costs aren't really any different. There's no more sort of equipment that I've used for this. It's the same sort of drilling, cutting operations. So overall, the cost of this, when you include a little bit of shipping, to go from scratch would be around £200. Outweight number three is where things get a little bit trickier to discuss. Again, I'm trying to phrase this video in terms of what I spent. And in terms of what I spent, this is the most expensive of the three. I will, at the end of this, however, talk about how you would now do this much more cheaply, purely because of one part that is in here that you can't get anymore. So this, as a robot itself, pretty reasonable. The cost of everything you see here, about £70. 
there is a component in there called a Nano 2. It combines some of the parts that we saw before. It combines the receiver and the speed controller. Fantastic bit of kit. I love driving this robot. It handles beautifully because that is a really good component. But they are now discontinued. They're not something you can get anymore. They also force you to use a different kind of transmitter. Now, there are budget versions available, but this is what I had. This is a Devo 7E. They're becoming kind of obsolete now, which I'm very sad about. Much more expensive transmitter. This was about £65. That's increased the overall cost of this particular robot quite a lot. The other thing that makes a bit of a difference is this metal front. This is titanium. Titanium is a very, very... I don't know if strong's the right word. It's a tough material. Really good in combat, but it means that it in itself is expensive. And it also means that it's ridiculously hard to cut. The sheet of material I used was, I think, four or five pounds. Not bad at all. It has, however, meant that I've needed a much better set of clamps and a much better saw. So it's kind of increased the tool costs quite a lot. Rather than a sort of one pound pound shop hacksaw, I was using a much bigger one that was more like five or seven pounds. I'll have to check. In terms of the clamps, rather than using my awful little pound shop clamps like these, these were not going to do the job at all. I was using something much beefier that was a good ten pounds. So that really is where the increase in cost for this comes. If you did this out of mild steel instead, which would still be probably massive overkill, really, for this weight class, you could be doing it with much cheaper equipment. You could bring that cost down by 20. The component I was talking about has now been replaced in spirit by something called the Malenki Nano. It's another Bristol Bot Builders product. Again, massive shout out to them. If I had one of those, I could use it to replace this. The part itself is £20 cheaper. And it also means that rather than using this, I'd be using the much cheaper transmitter that we looked at earlier, which would bring the overall cost down significantly. OK, let's get big. Let's talk about the beetle weight. This is Hello There. It is one of my favourite things in the world. I'm still immensely proud of this robot. And actually, now I've put this all together, I'm kind of proud of the cost as well. So to get this out of the way, the overall cost of what you see on the table right now is around £180. Our overall spend to get this robot running and take it to Bugglebots was a lot higher. I've estimated that at more like 450, but we'll talk about why that is as we go through. This is a pretty budget robot in terms of the parts. There are a couple of design decisions that did increase the cost, mostly that we've ended up using lots of different thicknesses of material. We've got 20 mil for the frame rails, we've got 10 mil for things like the wedge, the back and the front. We've got some three mil on the top, three mil of a different material on the bottom. If you want to do this more economically, you could. Our overall spend on materials, and bear in mind we didn't use most of this material, but it's still, again, if we're going from scratch, it is what you would spend. Overall cost of materials was, I've gone off the page, that was silly of me. Looking at around £40 in physical material, maybe a little more. So just the plastics themselves and the aluminium. Another surprisingly big cost is the wheels. So these are Bainbot's wheels. They come in two parts. They come the outer wheel and the hub that connects to the motors. Overall, a set of four wheels is around, I think, £25. Plus some, frankly, extortionate shipping from Robot Shop, which I'm still bitter about to this day. So that's where the sort of main cost of the robot comes from. The drive motors that are in here, really cheap, sort of £13 to £15 for the pair. The servo that's in here that powers the weapon, about £11. The receiver, just like before, about 10 There's nothing in there that's particularly complicated. The battery is also probably just over a tenner. Really economical robot in those terms. Where things start getting a bit more expensive is once you start looking at your tools. And again, this is a consequence of some design decisions. There are certain things that we needed that, first of all, not a lot of people are going to own. And second of all, you just end up buying in a set or whatever that costs more than it really should. So the big tool costs on this, the motors are through mounted, which means we needed a sort of correct size hole, about a 25 millimeter hole in these frame rails. So we had to buy hole saws for that. That I think is about a 15 pound set of hole saws. You've also got 
things like with the hubs the threads on them aren't very good so we drilled and tapped those to a different size that meant we needed a set of taps i don't know how much that cost if you just need the one you could probably get it for about a fiver you've also got the really strange costs like connectors so this is an xt30 connector there are a few of them in the robot you only need three or four but you're going to end up buying a pack of 10 or 20. things like bolts as well you buy in bigger bulk than you need so all of that does add up a little bit so overall tools and parts to get this running probably about 350 and then i think for competition we probably got about 100 pounds worth of spares we made sure we had spare wheels because this thing is in it's set up in a way where it loses wheels let's put it that way the extra material extra motors because the gearboxes tend to be quite unhappy a spare battery a spare weapon servo a spare of basically everything that we needed so all in all getting this running and competing probably about 450. the reason i'm discussing spares for this and not the ant weights is quite simply that beetles seem to take a lot more damage i'm yet to have to replace a part in an ant but it is something you would want to think about if you were going to compete with them so that has been a very brief rundown of the costs of a few quite simple insect weight robots. In terms of what I'd like people to take away from this video, it is that most of the cost of doing this isn't things that you put into the arena. It's not things that you're necessarily going to lose. It's the tools and equipment outside of it that end up costing. If you're in a position where you've already got a, even just a basic set of DIY tools, you'll probably find that these costs come down quite a lot. You still got the initial investment in that really specific stuff, so the transmitter, charging, things like that. Once that's gone, if this is something that you're in for the long term, the per robot cost of that goes right down. I've got three robots on the table here, but I've realistically got five or six elsewhere, either in parts or fully complete at the moment, that I'm also running or intending to run in different ways. This hasn't been a how-to on doing it cheaply. I think that's very much up to you. But in the spreadsheet, which I really do encourage you to look at, I've opted not to go through the individual cost of every part because that would just be me shouting numbers at a camera and no one needs that in their life. There is, however, on the spreadsheet, at the very end, a little breakdown of the cheapest possible robot that I've been able to build. I built some small robots for my workplace. I work in a school just for children to drive, they were very cheap. So if you're looking at, okay, what is the minimum I could do? Say you've got a young child, for example, who just wants the experience of driving something. If you want something that's not for competition, that might be more of the way to go. These, however, are all competition ready builds. I'll be confident taking any of these to a competition and feeling like I could win a match. This one hasn't, this one has this one hasn't had the chance yet but all of these i have confidence that i can go into a fight and be competitive with them